It's time for This Week in Location-Based Marketing, episode number 37. This is recorded live with a live studio audience of two of us on August 7th, that Sunday, late in the evening, uh, probably about four hours before Asif has to get up for his next trip down to uh, Minneapolis or Minnesota, the Twin Cities, eh? Absolutely. Uh, that's it. So this is episode number 37. My name, of course, is Rob Woodbridge, one of your co-hosts on this intrepid trip that we keep taking down the location-based world. With me as always from New or from New York, I was gonna say that's where I just came from. From Toronto uh, is Mr. Asif Khan from the LBMA. Welcome, Asif. Yeah, thanks, Rob. Uh, you can find Asif at thelbma.com or at the LBMA on Twitter or at Asif R Khan on Twitter and myself, of course. You can find me at untether.tv or at Rob Woodbridge. Blah. Yes, what a weekend it has been. Uh, delayed everywhere and uh, late to start. So, Asif, always appreciate the fact that you've got some patience. The patience bone is in Asif, definitely, man. Uh, no worries. It's uh, you know, I just just want to just want to get this one done and uh, lot, lots of news as usual. So, um, we should know, jump right uh, into it. We got we got a massive amount. Well, first of all, uh, you're you're down in uh, in Minneapolis uh, speaking, en- engaged in a uh, another conference. Engaged in another conference, uh, Minneapolis, one of the hotbeds for retail. So this is a retail uh, summit. Uh, you know, companies like Target and Best Buy, and you know, all, all those wonderful companies uh, up there. And uh, so the retail world's gathering, and we're going to talk about mobile and location and social and digital signage and a whole bunch of things. So yeah, should sounds, be fun. Sounds like a uh, one of those events. And and uh, you're back. Obviously, this is a couple of days. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. Back. Uh, I think Thursday morning or something. Yeah. Well. Um... Should we jump right into this? Uh, you know, I, I have a special clip uh, to introduce our first our first story here because uh, I don't know if anybody knows here, but I am I am quite uh, quite the Yankees fan, and uh, and while this isn't really a baseball story, uh, it involves the Yankees and Mastercard, but uh, might as well just start off with one something like this. All right, so let's talk about what what the Yankees are doing with Mastercard and Facebook Places. I think the Yankees are just like the the third partner in this. Story number well, one. The th- but but since since you brought up baseball, so one of the things that we I am going to do this week while I'm in Minneapolis is I'm going to go see the Twins play at Target Field against the arch nemesis, the Boston Red Sox. Oh, so that's a sweet um, game. Yeah, so that that should be a good game, anyways. But um, yeah, so let, let's get right into this. Mastercard, Facebook, and the New York Yankees. So earlier this week, um, Mastercard announced a, a program. Um, that basically integrates QR codes and Facebook places. And what they've done is, is they went and they found 20 of the old seats from the old Yankee Stadium, and they've kind of mounted them on special uh, platforms uh, with some branding, a MasterCard branding and such, and they've kind of um, hidden them around the city, or not really hidden them, but placed them around uh, New York City. And people can basically go into the, go up to these seats and, and sit on them and check into the ball game by scanning this QR code or, or going to a mobile uh, URL. So nobody stolen uh, them. Like- and, and the check-in is is into Facebook places. So that's that's the connectivity. So it's an out of home marketing campaign. Uh, again, um, you know, combining QR codes, Facebook places and ma- MasterCard branding all around, you know, the Yankees in New York City. It always surprises me that somebody hasn't walked off with uh you know, unbolted those twenty seats and uh, and walked mm-hmm. off with them. It is, it is New York. I don't know if the prize of uh, winning an MVP uh, uh, seat in uh, in the new Yankee Stadium is worth more than actually those seats from the old Yankee State Stadium. Right. So the prize could be just the fact that they're no longer where they where they were put. Which I think is anybody out there, if you've got one of those seats now, you know there were twenty of them dispersed across New York City. Right. Um, right. I think this is this is a really cool uh, a cool thing. One of the th- I mean, it, it's uh, it's great for Facebook Places, and I love the fact that um, you know if you don't know how to check in with with Facebook Places, they're they're using basically a barcode or a QR code scan to to check you in, right? Yeah, and it's you know it's not the first time Facebook has done this, um, you know, especially in, in sports and, and baseball in particular. So, but I, I guess a year ago now, uh, when the Giants uh, were you know in the World Series and Tim Lincecum had its eleven strikeouts. They did a similar thing with uh, Facebook Places and Red Bull uh, was the sponsor, and they basically had uh, ten or sorry eleven autographed uh, baseballs, Tim Lincecum uh, autographed baseballs, eleven matching the number of strikeouts he had in the in the game, uh, and they hid them in bars around the city in, in San Francisco, 
and again, people had to find them based on pictures and kind of go there and kind of discover the city, discover these bars, find these balls. First one to get find the ball gets the ball, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, you know, so again, not brand new territory for them, but, you know, cool because it's the Yankees and Facebook places, MasterCard. And old seats. You know, and old seats. What, what are the stories? I know we've talked about this probably in episode number one or number two of this, which seems like a long time ago. And it was 36 weeks or 35 weeks ago. Uh, was what uh, Gary Vaynerchuk and his team at VaynerMedia did with the New Jersey Nets, and mm-hmm. um, not this this uh, season that happened, but the previous season, uh, the last home game, they uh, distributed virtually uh, through Gowalla. You know, uh, I think it was 150 pairs of tickets around uh, a 75 mile perimeter of the Izod Center, which is where they used to play. And right. uh, people, you would check in to these locations, and and uh, you would get uh, virtual goods, and the virtual goods were two tickets to the game, and then you would obviously exchange those uh, for uh, for real tickets, and then be taken for the VIP treatment. I love that kind of approach, uh, especially for a a, um, a team that sucked as much as the New Jersey Nets uh, did suck, ten wins in the season. Yeah, yeah. Well, when you're struggling, it's uh, you know you want to try everything to fill those seats up. So yeah, it's just uh, it's the Yankees aren't struggling, right? They are a no. first place team right now. Up yeah. on the Boston Red Sox by game and playing right now, if you can believe it. My God, what are we doing here? Exactly. Anyhow. You can, you can uh, just so. listen to us watch the game. How's that? <laughs> so, so it was good, good promotion. I like this uh, yep. this combination, Yankees, Facebook, MasterCard. Um, Big brands. Let's, let's see how it plays out. Those are all billion-dollar brands right there, multi-billion-dollar brands. God love them all. The rich get richer. Uh, second story. Go, Yanks. Um, booyah! Thinking that North Ooh, yeah, America, yeah. Ba- basically North America has played. We're moving into Japan. Yes. Yeah, so, so, so this is something we we haven't talked about these guys for oh. quite a long time now. Uh, you know, Buya has uh, been been around for for a long time. Uh, you know, one of, was one of the pioneers in kind of location based uh, services. Um, it's an iPhone Android uh, platform, um, and the product. So Buya is the company. The product is called MyTown. Um, and and so the announcement this week is is that you know they've they've been in the U.S. they've kind of done the North American thing and they've basically said hey we're going into Japan, and and I actually like this move I think it's a good move for them because my town uh, is is always been about the gaming elements of of location um, and one of the interesting things about this platform one of the things I, I liked from about this platform from the very beginning is that you know when when you hear people talk about reluctance to get involved in location and because of privacy issues and things like that, you know the concept of checking into a virtual world, so to speak, um, and and unlocking and so you know check into an H and M store inside of my town or check into you know um, you know Yankee Stadium in um, in my town, you know and unlock the deals and rewards that you know we see out in the real world with a lot of the other platforms. You know, if if privacy is an issue for you, this is a way around it. You can still do that. You know, the the check in activity virtually in this environment. And so this is this is like um, second life. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, uh, kind of reinvented. If you're not familiar with my town, think of second life reinvented with locations and you know the concept of checking into those places. Uh, and all kinds of brands are involved in this. Um, uh, I know H&M, I mentioned already, they've been a big uh, a big player in this uh, environment. Yeah, Procter & Gamble, um, Adidas, yeah, these, these guys, MTV, yeah, yeah. Disney. And so you can check into these places and you can un- unlock virtual rewards, just as you just described with the Goala thing, and then you can redeem them for real rewards in the real world. So it gets you around some of these security issues, um, privacy issues that some people are concerned. And it so, they, again, the announcements that they're going into Japan. Yeah. Um, and so they've got some relationships going with Disney and some others over there already. Um, I think th- I think this is going to be a good a good fit for them. Well, I, you know, I think it is. It's still it's still not going to. Um, you know, the only difference between this and, and uh, Second Life is the fact that uh, you have to leave your basement yeah. to participate in, in, in with uh, with my town, right? Uh, with Boya's uh, product, um, you have to leave your basement. So the, the challenge is you still have to be social in the real world in order to, to uh, check into a real wor- world uh, uh, place in order to be able to get the, the rewards. But uh, Right, right. Yeah, I, I think this, it's interesting. I, by no stretch of the imagination, I think, uh, is, is uh, Booyah saying that basically uh, North America, we've, we've, uh, we've been there, done that. Um, this is just, I think, an opportunity that has uh, presented itself, and it's a good one for them. Absolutely, it's a good one, and, and people use my town. It's one of the, the yeah. highest <laughs> yeah, used systems. I mean, uh, I'm just looking at the numbers here: 35 million branded virtual items are consumed each week by my town residents. 
So, um, you know, those are million big... branded items. Yeah. That's incredible. That's some big numbers. So, yeah, I, you know, it, it pays. This is one of those instances where, uh, you know, you're basically making everything a game. And, uh, I guess this is the, uh, the scavenger route, uh, but, uh, ahead of scavenger even. Wow. Right. So Buya enters Japan and we both think this is a good deal, but we, they just can't leave their roots behind. In North Absolutely. America. Um, where are we going now? We're going. Uh, we're going to Living Social. Living Social. Living Social. Getting all up in Groupon's grill. Can I say that? If I'm, can you I can. Say that? You can. Um, so you know, th this is the this is you know just the latest in a series of you know everybody's kind of following uh, the trend, and the trend is, you know, we were a daily deal provider. Uh, we were, uh, you know, sign sign you up, and we'll send you an email with you know the deal of the day. Yep. Um, and everybody's kind of said, "Hey, that's cool. That's interesting. That got us a bunch of subscribers." But uh, we all got to go mobile now, and we all have to go location. Um, and so that's what's happening. Everybody's launched a mobile app. Everybody's started to add location-specific deals. Um, and so basically, Living Social has a feature called Living Social Instant you now. Um, so that's that's really the big announcement here. Is is that they've kind of entered that game. The other thing to talk about with Living Social is. They've been, uh, like Groupon, doing a lot of acquisitions lately. And so they also announced uh, this week that um, they acquired a company called Ticket Monster uh, in uh, in South Korea. And so that gives them uh, a, a big move into that market. And, and Ticket Monster already had a mobile app, a location-based uh, service going on in uh, in South Korea. They've also entered, I think it's Colombia and Uruguay uh, via acquisition as well. So, so now, I mean, Living Social is now in 25 countries. They've got about 42, 43 million members um, at last count. So they're they're growing. You know, they're not Groupon uh, in, in terms of size yet, but they're they're there, and they're uh, you know they, they got some cash and they're moving forward. And there's even talk about like Groupon and IPL. Well, and these guys obviously are uh, are backed by uh, by Amazon, and I'm a huge fan of, of Amazon. Right. Um, and uh, you, you know, one of the things about these you know Groupon now or Living Social Instant is is um, I, I think that what we're going to see, and I read a great article by Pascal Emmanuel Gobri, um, and I got the article here, and it's on Business Insider, and um, and what they're saying is that um, um, this is this might be a, a great concept, but in reality, this is probably um, trying to push the the uh, the deals that are expiring right away. You know what I mean? Right. That have a day left, and they they need to show some results. So I expect that that's what this is going to be for the first little while is basically a bunch of deals that are expiring on that day that uh, and uh, uh, Living Social Instant will highlight those deals um, that that are literally going to expire in the next 24 hours. And I think that's probably a smart a smart way to do this to show value. And then as that kind of creates um, some kind of momentum, they're going to start to do the unique deals. Um, but I'll tell you, I like what I like what. Um, you know, uh, this is this is just uh, play everybody else, but I like what Wagjag is doing a little bit better than than what these guys are doing. Uh, but yeah. um, Living Social had to respond to Groupon now, so uh, Living Social Instant Groupon now doing the same thing. Um, we're we're still looking for that innovative company beyond this, I think. Uh, mm -hmm. But certainly, two two powerhouses, aren't they? Uh, without question, I mean, I think they're you know they're the two best uh, best known, best funded, um, you know, and will continue uh, you know to grow through acquisition. I think in particular, and obviously you know it, you know through some of the money they're going to raise in in IPOs, which we we know Groupon's doing and we hear IP, uh, Living Social's about to do. Um, you know, I'm sure that'll get put back into uh, R and D and 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 hopefully technology and innovation as well. So that's right. You know, Direct living social. The deals. Hey, yeah. So, I mean, uh, living social, it's an interesting play. Um, you, you know, just to summarize what, what you're getting out of this is that you're, uh, they're not uh, group buys, they're deals that expire in the, in, within 24 hours. They're almost instant deals. Um, and they're kind of deals on the go, just like, uh, just like Groupon did with Groupon now. Um, but this is by no means a Groupon now killer. This is a Groupon now complement. It's it's the equivalent to a Groupon now, um, yeah. with the second largest uh, group buying uh, service or couponing service in Living Social. So you can find information about that at Living Social. But uh, uh, Living Social launches instant. Living Social instant. And then as I was talking about, uh, you know, the interesting story for me is um, is Wagjack, man. This is a uh, this is a yeah. Canadian company. It's a Canadian company. Um, so what we're talking about here is is so 
Toronto Star Corporation, Torstar, um, which is you know one of the largest uh, media companies in, in Canada, uh, has had a, a service called WagJag, which is a daily deal service. So it's similar to Groupon and uh, and Living Social that we were just talking about. Um, you know where people signed up and they got the email, uh, the daily deal, um, and so they uh, they also announced uh, this week a, a new app uh, called Wagjag Express, and so Wagjag Express is all about location based um, deals, uh, and the deals uh, come in in various varieties. So you've got kind of the deals that are purely based on location and are just there and and aren't necessarily time sensitive per se. They're just you know the deals for whatever retailers or vendors are around you uh, and then you have the deals that are the uh, you know similar to the living social instant which are you know t very time sensitive you know uh, merchants pushing out uh, uh, perishable items pushing out uh, offers based on you know uh, downtimes if they're restaurants or, or whatever it is uh, and so they're trying to deal with uh, filling those off peak hours and so you know it's the combination of those things which I think is quite interesting and Wagjack by the way is the uh, the largest um, uh, provider of, of daily deals uh, in Canada, so yeah. they're in fact bigger than Groupon or in Living Canada. Social in, Can in the Canadian market. So yeah. they're they're at about uh, last count I saw about uh, 1.2 million uh, subscribers, and I had a good chat with. Uh, their uh, their head of uh, of uh, digital uh, over there, Candice Factor, uh, the other day about this, and uh, and and definitely they you know they wanted to fill that void of in particular in the Canadian market there wasn't anybody really providing a living social instant or a group on now or that kind of dealing with enabling the merchants to uh, to provide you know off peak uh, hours and and perishable item uh, solutions, so so that's you know really interesting that's there and I think one of the neatest things about this uh, if you'll allow me Rob yeah. is uh, on the merchant side as they go out and they sign up merchants to do this they're giving every merchant an iPad um, you know who participates in this program and, and the reason for this is, is, is really kind of twofold so the merchant gets an iPad uh, and the iPad is 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 Wagjag branded, and it and it's basically set up to interact with the vouchers that the customers uh, receive on their phones uh, to redeem the deal. So so what's happening here is is you go as a, as a as a consumer with, that has the mobile app, and you say, yeah, okay, I want to I want to get that deal. So you basically buy buy the deal, and then you get the uh, the voucher. And the minute you buy that deal, the merchant. Who who's offering that deal? That iPad automatically updates itself on the other side, basically, and then ha you know has your name and everything there. So what it means is is when you show up at the merchant, okay, whoever's on you know working working the shift over there, uh, whoever the merchant is, and you say, hey, I'm here to uh, redeem my Wagjag deal. Basically, you just grab your iPad and it's there, and all the names should be there, and all the voucher numbers should mm. be there, and you just basically you know because it's all synced up. Really, really cool, innovative uh, way to do it, and I think uh, we haven't seen that from Groupon. We haven't seen that from Living Social. Uh, so kudos to, you know, good old Torstar Digital and Wagjag uh, Express uh, Canada, yay Canada! Let's go. Um, Makes so, it easy. Makes it so simple, right? You, there's nothing to integrate. Uh, there's no back end, blah blah. You don't have to bring it into the POS. You just have to hand yeah. them an iPad and uh, and hit, tell them to hit this icon uh, and yeah, launch. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's like having a second cash register yeah. ready to go. Um, you know, I like it. just like that. And the other part of it, you know, the other value to the merchants is is it, it comes, you know, that iPad comes with you know, all sorts of metrics on on you know who these people are and these users that are buying these things and so on and so forth. So you know, really, really good value there to the merchant as well. The, right now, the last thing I yeah. say about this uh, this launch is is in addition to launching the the product and uh, you know and the iPads for the merchants and all of that. They also kicked off a consumer uh, marketing campaign around this, um, and one of the key things is is they uh, this month August uh, the month that they launched and they're calling it Wagjag Express Month, and select businesses that are signed on to the program, select merchants are basically going to be offering one dollar deals, um, and so they basically it could be a you know a, a yep. get lunch for a dollar at this restaurant, it could be you know a one dollar yoga session, it could be a, a, you know whatever. 
Uh, it could be a whole bunch of things, but there's all these one dollar deals to get consumers excited and engaged with it. And and when they launched the, uh, last week uh, during the week, um, they actually had uh, 75 people out on the streets of downtown Toronto, you know, uh, promoting Wagjag, wearing Wagjag T-shirts, handing out free hot dogs and ice cream and all kinds of stuff. So they they really did a good job of of kind of putting this together and launching. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I was just trying to find it, but uh, did I did I look and see that? I mean, they're focusing exclusively on the Canadian market uh, because it's yes. they don't think that it's um, it, it's well serviced, shall we say, from any other uh, big player like Groupon or Living Social or anybody else. So, um, if Wagjag, do you think that Wagjag is uh, it's owned by Torstar? But do you think that it's an acquisition uh, potential from somebody like Groupon who wants to get into? We talk about this all the time, right? Or is are, is this something help, that uh, Torstar holds on to? I, I, I actually think it's the latter. I think I think it's something they hold on to. And you know what? I, I think if you know, who knows? I mean, it, it, hypothetically, if they are able to innovate the technology further and move further along, maybe they go the other way. Maybe they start to go international. Who knows? Nice. I like that. If um, they're going to buy Groupon, <laughs> they're going to rescue Groupon out of insolvency. That's what's going to happen when Groupon right. goes bankrupt. So. These guys are going to be right there. Wagjag's going to pick them up for a dime. Anyway. Billion dollar, you know, yeah. uh, uh, investment. Um, so Wag Jag Express. So those are the four stories. We got uh, my Yankees uh, working with uh, Facebook and Mastercard, uh, three small brands working together to to showcase, uh, you know, what it means to actually check in and uh, win some tickets. We've got uh, Buya entering Japan. We've got Living Social uh, launching Instant, and we've got Wag Jag. Um, uh, Wag Jag Express launching launching first in Toronto and then uh, where you get a dollar haircut. I'm not sure I value a dollar haircut. I like to spend money on my haircut. Just doesn't show. But I like to spend money on my haircut just so it feels like uh, you know I'm actually um, getting a, a good haircut. Um, I once had a haircut that I spent a, a discount a coupon on it because I I got a coupon and I went there and um, mm-hmm. I was sitting. This is a very quick story. I was sitting next. I was sitting uh, in uh, in the uh, barber's uh, chair, the uh, salon's chair. And I was uh, talking to the woman who was about to cut my hair, and I looked over, and there's a picture of uh, of somebody with a mullet, right, right, you know, uh, on her stand. And I just kind of casually leaned over and said, "So, hey, um, who's uh, who's the guy over there?" And she said, "Oh, that's my husband. I did his hair." Da da da! And I I came out of there with a mullet, man. And I ran to the first place I could find a, a pair of scissors and cut my hair myself. True story. Wow. Never, never get a discounted haircut. All right. Uh-huh. So let's talk about some funding um, yeah. and some acquisitions. Well, uh, let's get lots back on track, funding. right? Asif, is that? Uh... Yeah. Well, no, no, no. I mean, lots of funding. Lots of funding. So, okay. So uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk with uh, an acquisition. Um, locator search being bought by Cartronics. Um, two companies that you probably not heard of. Yeah, uh, I, I hadn't heard of these companies, but uh, anyway, so Cartronics uh, acquires Locator Search, um, which is, as the name implies, a location search technology, um, and it's it's a it's a product that's specific to the financial services industry. Uh, and you've used it. This. I've used. What's it. that? We've we've everyone has used. We've this. all used it. It's yeah. just baked into a lot of the apps and things that uh, that we use from our banks and. Um, and uh, insurance companies and others. So you know when you're looking, you know ATM lookups and all that kind of stuff. Uh, in terms of where they are, this is this is what Locator Search does. Um, and so Cartronics acquired them. Um, and in fact, um, it, it's really a, an acquisition of a company that uh, you know they had basically seeded and built, and they yeah. just kind of finally brought it in house. Um, so because it was originally built between Cartronics and Allpoint Network uh, back in 2000. And uh, and four, I believe, and then they kind of brought it back in. So, so you know, not big news there, but um, you know, interesting to see that uh, you know this technology you know exists all over the place. You know, we talk a lot about retail and daily deals and you know uh, location-based deals, but you know, FIs and ATMs and other things are uh, also a big part of this ecosystem. So yeah, and that's what they said is that this this acquisition was a strategic strategic acquisition, so um, aimed at enhancing. Or increasing revenue um, or usage per ATM, right? So inside of the network, yeah. and it's really interesting because what I didn't know as I was doing a little bit of research on it is that you can search 
And you can find out, for example, uh, I don't know if this is enabled in any of these in Canada yet, but um, you can find out which um, what surcharges are going to be charged at that at this specific ATM. Right. So when you're searching for them around you, it'll tell you how much it's going to cost to take your own money out, which drives us everybody crazy. Um, or what services are around there. It, it's just uh, that kind of enhanced feature is so great is that you might decide to go you know, an extra 500 meters uh, past the one in front of you simply because it doesn't have a surcharge or it has a less of a surcharge. Right. So good technology. Um, uh, but I had already assumed that it was already, you know, it was baked in. It was owned by the banks already. So uh, here's a perfect example of, of a good acquisition. B bring the technology mm -hmm. in. I love it. So that's uh, so that's Cartronics buying uh, Locator Search. Yeah, I love the uh, the names in the banking industry. Cardtronics. What do you think they do? And uh, Locator Search. What do you think they do? Pretty straightforward. Yeah, it's not like booyah, right? <laughs> it doesn't have that because uh, I don't uh, think you can say booyah without saying booyah. Um, uh, second uh, story under the funding category that you provided. Team buys. Team buy actually closed a seven million dollar round. So let's talk about team buy. Yeah, so so this one's uh, this one's interesting, relevant to you know the the wag jag discussion we just yes. had. So I mean, basically, another Team Toronto Buy company was again another Toronto company. Yep. Uh, you know, seven million dollars. This is a big amount of money, I think, for uh, a company in this space, especially in the Canadian market. Um, you know, Team Buy was you know the the first daily deal service launched in in Toronto in Canada. Uh, going way back, so um, you know, long before Wagjag, long before uh, Living Social and Groupon came into the Canadian market, these guys were there. Um, you know, uh, um, I don't know really what to say about this. I mean, I think it's it's interesting that um, they've gotten that amount of money. I think it's interesting, especially relevant uh, uh, to what Wagjag just announced, yeah. because you know, Team Buy doesn't have. A mobile uh, location, um, you know, uh, play at the moment, hmm. and um, so is this seven million dollars so they can go build one? They've said they're only focused on the Canadian market; they're not interested in anything else. Uh, I mean, their numbers are, are pretty good yeah. um, in, in terms of uh, you know revenue or so. So I mean, they're they're the uh, they're not they're the number four player in the Canadian market. We're um, number four. Yeah. I think that's good, and they also survived uh, Canada's uh, Dragon Den, which is, uh, I think, the equivalent to a Shark Tank in the U.S. Yeah, that's how they that's how they first got kind of into the market. So, so they already lost fifty percent of their company right up front for like ten bucks, right? Because uh, <laughs> I think they accepted the deal. Um, yeah, I don't know if yeah. they did They've or got not. About a million members or so. So yeah, not yeah. quite, but yeah, they're getting there. But I think that's uh, so. Team buy group buying, uh, and they they got seven million dollars. They've been around since two thousand nine hundred employees across uh, sixteen Canadian cities and nearly a million members. Uh, you know, this is a company. It's it's um, it's kind of under the radar in Canada, even to Canadians. But it's a Toronto-based mm -hmm. company. I, you know, good news for them. Anytime where there's any funding for Canadian-based companies, I'm a big fan of that. Obviously. Uh, yeah, yeah. As am I. I mean, I, I you know I, I'm happy to see that you know. Uh, Someone's giving them some capital that can sustain some growth there, and and let's see what they do with it. I mean, I I, I haven't had a chance to connect with these guys for a while now, um, so obviously I'm going to do that and kind of see where you know where they're going. Maybe we can talk about that uh, somewhere in the in, in the not too distant future. But um, hopefully, it means that you know they're gonna they're gonna move into uh, into the location uh, app arena and and start to invest there. Probably means they're going to uh, do some consolidation of some of the other smaller players. Yeah in the Canadian market. That would be a good thing. Um, well, let's see what happens. Well, good. Seven million bucks. It's not It's not uh, enough to uh, to take over the Canadian market, but certainly a number four, it can give them a good bump uh, or solidify their position or really position them well for a um, to be acquired. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. Our last our last funding is uh, Who's Here? Um, closing about, uh, just I think it's a million two, five or a million five. Uh, yeah. In, this is their first, this is their first, uh, um, uh, round of uh, investment, and this is done by Lightbank, and uh, I know these guys because I interviewed uh, uh, them for on Tether TV. Really enjoyed um, enjoyed uh, speaking with them simply because this is a company that uh, was first to market uh, for group chat, basically, um, and uh, and uh, now they have four million users, and uh, the the numbers are astounding. So Steve Stephen Smith. Uh, is the guy that I interviewed. He's the CEO right. and or COO, and and it was, it was a great interview because 
you don't know what to expect from these guys, but they're profitable, making money, and uh, and you know just a small team. That, 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 that's an innovative concept, isn't it? Profitable and making money. I just exactly um, yes. Yeah. Put, put the two together, but so this is this is good for them. One point two five, I think, is the first round uh, institutional funding. I think they've yeah, had some angels. I think these guys are well positioned to uh, to see some serious growth. I mean, yeah, yeah as you said, they're profitable. They're making money. Uh, Four million users. Um, uh, they're sending about 10 million messages a day, uh, you know. So, 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 you know, it's an i, it's an iPhone app, um, you know, uh, 14 languages. I mean, so, so these guys have a lot of capability. If you're not familiar with it, go check it out. Go download it from the from the App Store. It's called Who's Here. Um, you know, message people based on your location around you. So group chat uh, kind of has a bit of that group me stuff that we talked about a while yeah. ago. Uh, but it also allows you to make free uh, VoIP calls, um, yes. uh, you know, through it as well. So without disclosing your uh, your personal info. So you know what? Uh, what they, they were pretty innovative. And what struck me uh, with, with them is that uh, they used to have uh, kind of the floodgates open. So if I was in Canada and you were in Japan, uh, I could see you from anywhere, and I can chat with you from anywhere. And uh, when they started to look at uh, uh, revenue models, I thought that it's such a unique revenue model is that it's virtual goods and virtual currency. And what they did yeah. is they said they closed off Japan from where I was in Canada. But if you wanted to speak to somebody in Japan, you could buy a flight to Japan. Right. right for right. three bucks, I could buy a ticket that opened up Japan. Come yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, in in some respects, it's like it's sort of like Skype. Yeah. Um, in some respects, you know, with a virtual goods model, uh, you know, it lets you do VoIP calls, it lets you send, you know, free text and image messages. It lets you do a bunch of text messages. Like yeah. You know, and, and you can and and you can obviously do this kind of group messaging based on you know find, talking to people around you that you don't necessarily know. So it has a bit of that as well. So it kind of combines those two things uh, with a virtual currency. So great, great uh, for them. Congrats on on the on the raise. Um, you know. Want want to see uh, want to see more uh, more from them in the future and and it's going to happen. Steven Spinner. good company. That's great. Yeah, who's here? It's a one point two five from Light Bank. That's it for the funding. Let's talk about the product. I'm pretty sure the product. This company, this product called Scanlight. Yeah. So uh, you know, I don't I don't want to say a lot about this other than you know, Scanlife is is one of those companies that you know it's been around a long time now. Um, you know, when we talk about you know, uh, QR code and uh, scanners. As far as apps are concerned, you know, there's there's the big guys out there, right? There's the red lasers, and and yep. and, and then there's the scan lives. Um, and and these are, you know, just just something we hadn't talked about for a while. And they popped back onto my radar this week because um, they they launched a new promotion with Taco Bell and MTV around the upcoming MTV uh, Video Music Awards. And so basically, you, know, you can go to Taco Bell and on the box. You know, if you get the, it's called the big box remixed um, package, or on the on the cups that you get your drinks in. There's QR codes now, um, and you can scan these things with ScanLife uh, readers uh, to basically uh, unlock, uh, um, you know, M M V uh, M A uh, loot and tickets and all kinds of stuff. So sneak peeks and you know content that you can't get anywhere else. And so a really good promotion and really interesting. Uh, connection between you know the use of QR, you know tying up with a big uh, quick serve restaurant chain brand and uh, you know and, and a reader. Scan life. So yeah. yeah, I'm really interested to see how this this plays out because uh, lots of talk about uh, QR codes and uh, and and any any kind of 2D barcodes I think are uh, interesting plays these days. Um, and uh, so these guys are obviously taking it to the next level with with big brands and obviously the MTV uh, Movie Awards and Music Awards. Mm -hmm. Scan life. All right, last but not least, cruising through here at minute number 32, our resource of the week. Yes, yeah, so, so the resource of the week uh, comes to us from uh, Thomas Husson. Uh, Thomas is a, uh, an analyst over at Forrester. And, and he, he's got an interesting blog post out uh, called How Mobile Location Services Will Fade Into the Background. And it's not what it sounds like. When you actually read this uh, post, um, this is why I pulled it out, it, it actually, it's not talking about the death of location-based services. It's talking about how they become so ubiquitous, yeah. basically, that they just fade into the background. They become part of everything that we do, uh, which is is really core to the way, you know, the LBMA certainly looks at location, and, and, and you and I, I think, look at location that, you know, it, it is like, and, and to, to quote you, Rob, it's like dial tone. Yeah. It's just there. Um, 
and and it becomes a part of uh, of kind of everything that's going on. And so if if you kind of buy into that perspective, or even if you don't buy into that perspective yet, read this post because I think it's a great little uh, resource uh, that he's put together to kind of you know understand kind of the future of where this is going. Um, so so well done, uh, Thomas. Absolutely. What he talks about is basically that uh, location enables so much uh, more innovation probably than what we're seeing right now. Um, right. And uh, it, it's just a feature. And that feature enables so much more. And, and uh, you know, I, we, we, we both agree on this. Um, and I love I love it because it adds relevancy to uh, where you are and, and what you're looking for. And, and we've seen it. So some of the examples throughout this, even this episode, when you start to think about... Uh, 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 Booyah and that virtual world uh, and uh, Living Social Instant and even uh, mm-hmm. Groupon now these are all uh, location is embedded but it's not the it's not the dominant uh, factor here it's uh, it's it's almost an afterthought it it, uh, it creates a little bit of value based on where you are um, and without like question yeah. yeah well that's it so we covered quite that's a it. bit here it's obviously you know we covered uh, some great stories uh, Yankees, Wag Jag, Booyah, Living Social. Uh, got some uh, Scan Life as the product of the uh, other week, and uh, funding from uh, Who's Here gets a million to five. Team Buy gets seven million, and Cartronics uh, buys Locator Search. And our resource of the week uh, from uh, Thomas Husson from Forrester. There it is, all in a yep. compact package. Where else can you get that kind of information in 33 minutes? And, you can't. and for the out there, if you're still looking for something to do this this week, uh, starting uh, tomorrow until the 10th, so the 8th to the 10th, and you want to get up to Minneapolis, you can join me at the Retail Customer Experience Executive Summit. Um, and so, like I said earlier, a lot of the big uh, retailer brands are going to be up there, and uh, should be uh, should be some pretty interesting discussion coming out of that as well. So, so you're there for this Monday Tuesday. That's great. And then, of course, you can also, or you, you can skip that and go see the uh, Twins with uh, Canadian Joe Maurer. Uh, Play the Red Sox. Yeah, playing the Red Sox. Yeah. There you go. Well, Asif, um, we won't keep you any longer. I know you got to get on a flight in about 15 minutes, right? <laughs> or is that you you got to sleep for 15 minutes before you get on I the flight? I got to sleep for 15 minutes, yeah, something like that, yeah. We, we uh, will be back here uh, next week for episode number 38. We're still trying to get back to our regular hours. This was my fault. Uh, delays everywhere. But, uh, of course, you can find this at untether.tv. You can also find this at thelbma.com. Uh, wherever you are, wherever you're seeing this, wherever you're watching or listening, we really would appreciate some feedback. Give us, give us a, Send us an email. Send us a, a Twitter post. Whatever you want to do. Right. You, we're really easy to reach. You can find me at untethered.gmail.com. You can find Asif at asif at thelbma.com. Um, did I say untethered.com? untethergmail.com yeah. that's what I said um, but please we'd love to hear back from you anything that you've got any feedback or any uh, resources or products that you'd like us to uh, to feature we're open we are open uh, and we love hearing from you guys so thank you for those who have provided some of that feedback Asif safe travels man thank you sir enjoy the baseball game and the conference will do and we will see you back here next week for episode number 38 Fantastic. And, and again, thanks to all of our viewers and uh, keep it coming, guys. Yeah. Love it. See you next week. Later. Bye.